Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Kent with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? Listen to what Henry Ford says. He said, there is no man living who isn't capable of doing more than he thinks he can do. Well, this go along with a conversation my wife and I had the other day. I was telling her, I said, listen here, at the end of my life, and when we stand before God, when God looks at me, I do not want these two words to come to his mind. Wasted potential. Can I talk about it on this episode? Let's go into it. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom. Man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast. From the pulpit to the podcast. To the podcast. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? I am your host, Jesse E. Canty. I'm hyped up, man, because when you start talking about destiny and and, and being at my place or being at my highest potential in life, I get excited, man, and I hope you do too. This is going to be a wonderful episode. So let's go ahead and get into this thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for the inspiration uh, the move, Father, that you have placed upon my heart, God, and this message that you have given me. I pray right now that you help me articulate it in a manner that you are pleased and that is effective for us. We give you praise on and glory in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. All right. Again, man, I say thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. I pray that it's been a blessing to you and it will continue to be a blessing to you. I got a lot of things that God has placed up in my heart for 2022 and I am going to, with the help of God, I'm going to fulfill uh, his uh, mandate upon my life concerning this podcast. And that's what I'm talking about today. As I said in my opening, my wife and I was having a conversation, man, and we was talking on some things. And um, Henry Ford's quote, that quote I said, that it's no, there is no man living who isn't capable of doing more than he thinks he can do. And we had sparked a conversation between us and we was thinking, I was thinking and pondering and go with me now check this out i was thinking and pondering about my life and i'm not talking about when i say the title that is entitled wasted potential i don't know if i said it but this is episode 163 but when i think about the title wasted potential these are two words that i do not want to come to god's mind when he looks at jesse now i know you say well you know you using your imagination no honestly i'm doing what the scripture says every person is going to stand before god every person and you're going to give account of you you have to give an account for everything you've done in your life every one of us have potential um to be better than what we are he have given us an assignment and that's just something I'm getting into that that's really that I really want to talk about here. I see my life since I said it. Let's go ahead and do it that way. I see my life and it's the way I believe it is. Is I'm not just sent here to live X amount of years to make my decision, live what I want to live, do what I want to do. I've said this many times on my podcast. I see my life as an assignment from God. I see that what he gives me, I think he gives me the, 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 the thing that I am, uh, the mission that is upon your life. God has you here on an assignment. There's something for you to fulfill. And the thing about it is God is not doing something for you now. He's already done it. The known of the God, under God or all his works. He knows the end from the beginning. I like to say it this way. God, when he created you, 
He already booby trapped you. <laughs> that means he already went ahead of you and put inside of you every he hid inside of you every gift that you need to accomplish your assignment. Everybody who's listening to me now, he's already went ahead of you before you was formed in the belly of your mother's womb. He have already gifted you with everything you need to be the best you that God intended for you to be. You don't have to worry. You don't have to run around here and say, I'm not gifted or I'm not blessed or I'm not this and that. You may not be what another person is. I don't have the gift to articulate myself in a manner that I wish I did, but that doesn't mean I'm not valuable. You got to use what you have, depend upon God to do what you cannot do. And you're going to find yourself doing great exploits. But what you don't want to do is sit back and not use what you have or do what you're supposed to do. Now, this is true with every one of us. You could have if you would have. Does that make sense to you? In other words, there are some things and there's some there's some places that you could be in life if you would be, if you would do what you're supposed to do in life. It's called unfulfilled potential. Nobody knows your full potential but God. The scripture talks about uh, the people who he gave uh, talents to talents in the scripture represented money. But it also represents your giftings. It also represents your opportunity, the assignments that God have given you. And he, when he gave that, those people that talent, he wanted people, he wanted the, the receiver to go and multiply it, increase what I've given you. And then you have the wicked servant, the people who did that, they was called good and faithful. And then when he came back in the parable, and the one who did nothing but hid it and put it in the earth, he called him a wicked and a lazy servant. And he cast him away into darkness, Matthew 25. Because he did not tap into his full potential. God had placed you here, and I'm talking to somebody. He has placed you here with all of the hiccups you have, with all of the hangups you have, with all of the adversity that you have going, against, have going against you since you was born. Maybe you don't know your father. Maybe you're the black sheep in the family. Maybe you didn't graduate high school. Maybe you don't have the job that you want. Maybe you're going through financially. Maybe you living with your parents in the basement. I don't care where you at in life right now. This statement is still true for you right now. God have placed you here on purpose and there is gold inside of you, but your assignment through life is to find the way and the motivation to dig that gold out of you. I hope you hearing this, that you are focused. You have to begin to focus and ask God, help me get all this valuable thing that you have placed inside of me out of me before my time is up. There's many of us who haven't even scratched the surface of your capabilities. You are not competing with nobody else around you. You are competing with yourself. You have been only focusing on running against those that's in your race or that's around you now. You can be the fastest runner in your school and be the slowest runner when you race against the people in your nation or in your country. In other words, if you only if you only live up to the potential of your peers around you, then you will never tap your into your greatest potential. And this is something that I experience and experiences daily that I will lose my motivation if I just look around in my circle 
my nearest, my people who I hang around every day or people who, you know, that, that I see. If I just look around and make sure that I'm a few steps ahead of them as far as chasing my destiny or whatever it is. This is why you shouldn't compare yourself with one another. It's unwise according to scripture. You know what it do? It'll make me become complacent and I will never, uh, I will never put forth my best effort to dig out all that's inside of me. Because the same illustration I just used, you can be someone in your high school and you can be the fastest runner in your high school. And you know what it's going to do if you you're the fastest run. I mean, when you race people, you don't even have to give your 100 percent effort. And what it's going to begin to do, it's going to make you begin to just do just enough to stay ahead. And if you take that person out of that high school and you put that person in a professional atmosphere or a college, a collegiate atmosphere, all of a sudden, the person who was the fastest at one level will become the, the last one in another level. And he never reached his greatest potential because he never pushed himself. He only pushed himself to live beyond what he was, uh, what was in his circle. And there's too many of us who are not giving our best effort. You're looking, you're looking, your circle is too small and you're only giving the effort just to stay ahead of the ones in your family or perhaps the ones in your city. And this message here is about wasted potential because when we got, when we die and have to stand before God, he's going to look back at you. And if you got a half a bell or a half a bucket of gold still left inside of you. God going to say this potential, your life was wasted because you never pushed yourself to be the best that you could be. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about this and that. Listen, if you go through life and don't grow through life, something ain't right. We can, most of us fail or many of us fail to invest in ourselves. We have to quit competing or worrying about impressing our peers and worry about being effective and impressing God. So I don't want to stand before him and hear him say, or even think of these two words wasted. This boy did not even stretch the surface of who I sent him there to be. My God, to me, that's a life of failure. If you did not complete your assignment, that God had given you. Let's go deep in this thing. Carl Jung said, every human life contains a potential. If that potential is not fulfilled, then that life was wasted. That's pretty strong, but I have to agree with that. Every human life contains a potential. If that potential is not fulfilled, then that life was wasted. The potential, again, is just another word that I believe as an assignment. Again, God picked you out of millions to be here. And do you think the God who put the stars in the heavens, called them by name, gave them an assignment? Do you think the God who put the planets and put the stars and the sun in the sky and did everything else in creation. You, he did everything meticulously. He did everything with strategy. Everything. We, I can start spilling off facts about creation that are blow both of our minds. Do you think the God who was that detailed with creating this earth was just doing something haphazardly when he placed you here? You think he just reached down and allowed one of the sperm cells to reach his destination, whichever one it is, and let him be born? No, he fixed the race and he intended for you to be here. Let that sink in. If God handpicked you just like he created everything else, that means you have an assignment and a purpose to be here and let me let me let me go kingdom that will kill the church mindset i don't mean the church building i'm talking about a closure mindset that god just wants you saved so you don't go to hell god's the god's plan for you is so much deeper than that 
Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. I want you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at jessecantypodcast at yahoo.com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at yahoo.com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. (sighs) Do you hear what I'm saying? I didn't say it don't include that. I said God's plan and idea for you. His whole purpose was not to put you here so you can live your life for him and come back to heaven only. He got you here. We are in. We are where we are at because there is a purpose and an assignment for us to be here. And yes, we're supposed to come back to him and live and live with him in paradise. But I'm talking about while you are here, you have been sent here with the mission. And if we do not complete that mission, then our life was considered a failure. I want to hear him say, well done. I don't know if this is exciting. So the young people may not want to hear nothing like this, but you need to hear it because it's going to drive you and help focus you that really, now I'm going to say something that's going to make you mad here. Your life, when you're thinking this purpose, when you think along the line of God's purpose and destiny, your life is not really just your life. Yes, he give us decisions. He give us the choice and give us freedom and stuff. But really, you have been sent here for a reason. And you, when you tap into it, man, your life turns into a ball of joy because you feel driven. I think I read a book called The Driven Life or The Purpose Driven Life. I think it was, it was The Purpose Driven Life. When you tap into your purpose and you become driven by your purpose, whew, Every day you wake up, it's not only a joy, but it's a challenge. Listen to this. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. That's Ralph Waldo Emerson. The person that you decide to be. Hearing this now, every day of your life, God gives us another chance to get Closer to what he have destined for us to be. I'm not talking about living a life of perfection. I'm not talking about every day you driving yourself hard and working 10, 12 hours a day. That's not what I'm talking. I'm not even talking about becoming a millionaire. I'm talking about sparking the sparking the thought. In your mind that will lead you to start having a conversation with God like this, Lord. Show me my purpose. I know I got some people that that comes to me quite frequently and ask me, can you help me find my purpose? Can you tell me what my purpose is? I'm not saying God can't use us to help you, guide you or articulate where you're at. Or what he has for you. But at the end of the day. I do not believe God want us to have a life that is meant to hear people. And not connect the person with him. I believe the veil was ripped from top to bottom. You don't just have to hear God just through a priest. You can also hear God yourself. And I think we need to learn to teach people that you need to pray to God, talk to God, ask God. And I believe God in his own way that is uh, connected with you He will reveal to you what your purpose and assignment is. And the scripture reveals to us surface wise. uh, What is our assignment is to to represents the kingdom of God Uh, uh, It's not to live any way we want to. The scripture cover a lot of these things that tells us a good bit of it right there. But I believe it also will get personal to you and he will begin to show you what your reason or at least lead you. And you have an unction of what is your reason for your existence. And I'm thinking like that every day. I want to come before God and I want to say, God, I don't believe that what I'm doing right now. I mean, you could take, I'm going to use myself, for example, whether it's my businesses that I have to, I don't, that he's given me and the ones I'm going to have, whether it's uh, the podcast ministry 
and even before the podcast ministry, pastoring. Oh, I hear you, Lord. Listen to this. I believe everything he's given me. I am supposed to give myself to it 100 percent. I mean, like I'm getting paid a million dollars an hour. Give your heart in everything. I don't care what it is. If you feel that God have given you this and this is what you're doing and you're making a difference to somebody, give yourself to it. Quit being given half hearted effort to what you feel you was created to do. I had to hit that one. If you feel you was created to do it, then you put forth 1000 percent effort. To do it in the, the best manner you can, because in, in it's through being faithful that you will fulfill your potential. Put everything you have into it. Don't let your enemy talk you out of doing what you was created to do because the timing or everything is not perfect. I know you know you're not where you want to be. And I know you look at things and say, we judge everything upon finances. If our finances or everything in our life or any situation in our life is not going perfect, we tend to fall back because we feel like we're, we can't be at our best because things are not perfect. Let me tell you something right now, while you're listening to me, you have the ability, you have the opportunity to begin to be faithful at what God called you to do. The big challenge is to become all that you have the possibility of becoming. You cannot believe what it does to your the human spirit to maximize your human potential and stretch yourself to the limit. That's Jim Rohn. I'm going to say that again. The big challenge is to become all that you have the possibility of becoming. An oak tree grows to its maximum potential. Any animal that is being, uh, I'm talking about animals that, that how you ask a dog, how far, how, how would he grow? He don't answer that. He will grow to his maximum potential. If he's in everything normal, he will grow to his maximum. It's only when it comes down to us humans that we choose to not be or become the best or at our best possibility of that we're able to become. You know what I mean when I say that? We have to stretch ourselves beyond the limits. Not many people want to go beyond the limits. Potential is a priceless treasure. It's like gold. All of us have gold hidden within, within us, but you have to get it out of you. Eleanor Reyes Roosevelt said, you must do the things you think you cannot do. Do you hear that? That goes along with what Henry Ford says. There's nobody living that is not capable of doing more than he thinks he can do. There you go. You have a whole lot more in you. Right now, everybody listening to you, I'm going to let you in on my mind, my, th- my, my conversation with God, and that he's been putting the praise upon my heart. I have a mandate that's been upon my life for years, but it's strongly upon my life for 2022. And the things that God have placed upon my heart that I must become in this year, I must learn. I must adapt to. It is a challenge. And yes, I feel on one end that I cannot do it. But as Eleanor Roosevelt said, you must do the things you think you cannot do. Quit talking yourself Oh, my God, this is good. Quit talking yourself out of who God trying to introduce you to. You have potential in you that has not even been tapped into. And again, you do not want to live a life where God will say that your potential was wasted. You never applied yourself as you should as you should have to become who he assigned you to be. Our potential is one thing, but what we do with it is another. You can have great potential to become what God purposed you to be, but if you don't do anything with it, 
then it's on you. Don't squander your potential. Excuse that noise in the background. I'm up in the, tr- the trash truck to deliver, but I'm going to keep going. Don't squander your potential living a life that amounts to far less than the one you are capable of living. And so many people have squandered their potential in a living life that's far less than what they're capable of living. And you cannot, you cannot, you don't have nobody to blame but yourself. Because you got to understand that that potential is endless. And the thing about it is your potential is unpredictable. You don't have no clue of what your potential potential is. None of us. But I do know three things you got to do. If you're going to begin to apply yourself to reach your fullest potential, number one, you got to be patient. You got to be patient. You can't just grow overnight. You can't. I mean, I mean, this is a lifetime. Just stretch this thing out of a lifetime. But with that patience, don't let that patience make you lazy. You got to have that second thing. You got to have perseverance. I love that word perseverance. You got to have that 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 character and that mindset that I refuse to give up. I'm going to keep striving. I don't care if you strike out. See, that's what I love about Michael Jordan, man. When Michael Jordan switched from basketball to baseball. No, he wasn't the greatest baseball player in the world, but he had his mindset on becoming a baseball player and being the best that he can be. And I can, I went to one of his games and Mike struck out, struck out, struck out the whole season. He really, I think he was batting like 200, 200 and something uh, batting average. He wasn't doing too good. He wasn't doing too good as far as the swinging, but he put in the work ethic. He kept working at it. Every time his coach said, listen here, out of all the people that's on this team, he, he has the greatest work ethic. He works the hardest. This is a multimillionaire. And the other kids around there didn't even have, man, nowhere near what he had. But he put in the work ethic. And over the season, he started hitting home runs. His batting average went up. Because if you fail to invest in yourself, you're never going to improve yourself. You got to have perseverance. You got to have patience. You have to have perseverance. And you also have to have precision. Don't aim at nothing. Don't just be running around here just doing something. Be wasting time. Because you can, you, can, you can live your whole life, but if you don't have precision... If you don't put your uh, your efforts in the right place, then you can spend a life trying to do something in the wrong place. So this is where you have to have that relationship with God. Because he leads you. It's wonderful to build a relationship with God where you start to recognize his voice. It's one thing to hear him through the preacher. It's one thing to hear him through your grandma now. But when you can feel the leading of God, that's pointing you in the direction that you need to be in your life. Oh, man. It's wonderful. Because when you get to the place and begin to apply yourself in the place that he have destined for you to be, you'll find stuff like supernatural provisions. You'll find stuff like you're doing something that's difficult, but it's almost easy to do it. It's easier than you thought because now he is helping you to become what he have already purposed for you to be. But if you fail to apply yourself, if we fail to apply ourselves and don't get lazy, don't allow ourselves to get to this place where we just live in life and we don't, we don't drop the ball on so many things. We're not challenging ourselves. You have to do the opposite. Keep that drive going. And if you can't encourage your, if you can't be encouraged by your circle, number one, you need to broaden your circle. I always said this before. Get you some friends that you don't even know. And I don't mean people that you hang out with. I mean, authors find you some books that inspire you. People you'll never meet. Put some things before you. And some people before you that's going to fan your flames. It's called self-development. 
whatever area that you feel that God has put you in and you need some charging, you need some fuel to stay sharp and you need to look beyond your peers because if you don't, you're only going to run fast enough to lead the pack that you with. And you'll never get to the place where you're supposed to be outrunning only the pack that you with. I hope that makes sense to you. I pray right now that you find that place that God wants you to be. Know that I love you, lifting you up. I pray that you confess your sins. Ask, Lord, I ask you right now, God, that you touch these people, Father, and that you bless them and strengthen them. Help them get their life to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love y'all. Have a blessed one. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty and the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.